Welcome back to the dopest show you won't get sick of. I'm Spencer and this is Sasha. I spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the stupid stuff I did to get put in prison. I've also got a lot of crazy stories about the stuff that happened while I was in prison. And God forbid you end up in prison. Well, to make some of the same mistakes I made. So I have a wild story today. Sorry it's up a bit late. At the end, if y'all been here for a minute, watch me at the end. Got something to say. But let's get right into it. So, Monster. Monster was an inmate that, uh, that gave the nickname to himself. Now, let me describe Monster. Monster was a big, big boy. Okay, he was about six foot four. He was shaped like a Teletubby. Okay, he was probably about 350 pounds, giant. But all the weight was carried in his hips, and he was shaped like a pear. He had a little mustache that didn't fill in too correctly. He had a horseshoe, a bald head, and just like a Teletubby, he had a little patch that came up right here. Had some type of skin looking ranch right there. It was an odd guy. It was obvious that he was probably not right. And he had an odor to him. He ended up in a four-man room in a corner with this guy who we're going to call Bull. Bull was somebody who I associated with at the beginning because Bull, Max, Ghost, all seemed like normal people. They all claimed they were in there for normal stuff. Ghost was in there apparently for robbing places, but... Had some iffy stuff before that. I looked up on being verified. Max was in there for counterfeiting, but he had a statutory charge, and he actually did end up marrying the girl. He was like 16. That was, you know, kind of got bad, but he's still technically, you know, considered a chomo. That's how it works in the feds. And Bull gave me a story one day about why he was in prison. He told me he got 24 years because he got in a car wreck. He was from Reservation, North Dakota, I believe, and told me that he got in a car wreck, he blacked out, he was driving under influence, and that four people passed from it, and that he got six years per person. And seemed believable. Later learned that was not true. But for a long time, I thought it was true, and I thought these were good people. It was hard to tell who was good and who wasn't there. And it really sucked. I have trust issues from now on, but anyway, Monster ended up in the room with him. Now, we did some boxing stuff in this room, um, Bull hold the mitt sometimes. There was another guy in the in the unit that had boxed in the past. You know, me and him got together. I had some mitts made in the leather shop. My buddy Kevin Crockett, who was an absolute savage, incredible leather maker. Me and my mom, Kevin doesn't know this. We're planning on, I'm going to take some of the money that I'm getting from YouTube and go in with my mom. I'm not making enough where I can get it all by myself yet, but my mom has seen his work. He, my mom was buying it from while he was still in prison. And I was getting it too, helping him sell some of it. He's making some of the most incredible stuff. He could probably make custom wallets at 100 a piece with your name, pictures put in it, everything else. I want to show some of this stuff. It's really incredible. He's, he's, he's got a unique gift. But anyway, he made these mitts, these boxing mitts that were tremendous. Better than anything you'd ever buy in a store. And we'd be in there and we'd do, you know, we'd do drills. He made these pads that strapped to your leg so I could throw leg kicks. Now, while he was making some, some got taken one time. And so then we had to improvise, you know, make some other stuff. We always had some backup ones. But we actually took a mat and made this thing. And we gave Monster a few bucks to put on this thing. And uh, well, it was Bull's idea, you know, to do this. I didn't know anything about him at the time. I was young. I didn't know if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It's probably a duck. I gave a lot of people the benefit of the doubt when I first got there. I didn't realize so many people were messed up. And just because you're local, you could end up at Petersburg. If you're from D.C., Maryland, Virginia, North South Carolina, um, Kentucky, Tennessee, you know, you could end up there. Half the people there are just local. Half the 40 percent are chomos there for the sex offender management program. 140, 150 people are there specifically to take RDAP. So if you're at another program in a neighboring prison, RDAP ain't in every prison. So you probably get sent to Petersburg to take this program. They have the LCP program. It's a religious program. You take that program, you get out nine months early on Halfway House. That's nine months off your sentence. You get to go home early. You do the drug program, you get a year off, you get six months Halfway House. So people end up there. That's 300 people. 150 people for the drug program. 150 people for the LCP program. There are other programs I'm probably forgetting. It's a big program place. But 40% were chomos, and you're forced to be around them. Okay? People say, why don't you do something about it? There's 800 of them. How are you going to deal with that? Okay, literally 800. There's like 16 to 1,800 people on this compound and 800 plus of them. Sasha, you're the star of the show, baby. I need you here. Sasha, right here, baby. You're the star. But anyway, so, do a dance. You'd see her pretty face a little bit. You know, but anyhow, 
Sorry about that. ADD, OCD, I can't help it. Monster, we had this thing put around him, and we throw body shots on him. He had a whole lot of weight, so he'd take his body shot. But he ended up finding about a nice distance from this area. You know, just some weird stuff that I ended up hearing one day, Bull saying. And I started paying a little bit more attention behind it. Bull said something about him, I said, and he said, make sure you get the money first. And then I seen Monster go in a room with the, um, with the fella who's from, you know, a fella, I'm, I'm not going to say where he's from, because there's always somebody that gets mad, because they're like, we don't roll like that where we're from. Well, guess what? There are people from everywhere that roll a certain way. There's a certain area, a little bit higher percentage of people, and that's not me picking on people. I never knew any of this stuff. You think I just randomly decided to pick on a city, pick on a state, because I just don't like them, like I have some type of agenda against them. No. And you ask anybody in there, no, nah, there's nobody, there's no reason for me to just come up with this stuff. I'm just speaking on what I saw. But anyway, I see him go in a room. They put up the bathroom sign. They're in there for about 15 minutes. He comes back out. He's got a few food items. And, you know, her bull saying, good, make sure you get it, because that last one didn't do it. I had to go handle it for you. I'm like... What the, what's going on here? So, you can put two and two together. He went in that room, put up the bathroom sign up. You can guess what's going on in there. He get his teeth busted, or maybe he was doing something of um, the top persuasion. I don't know. Smelled like smelled like sour milk. I mean, this dude really was nasty. I mean, I'm telling you. And it just showed how low these people and these people. Here's what's really crazy. I talk about all these chumas and all this extracurricular stuff. All these gangsters, you go hard, I go hard. They, they think that, you know, they, they go in there and they do this stuff with these people. They don't think it makes them bad if they're like the one, uh, they're the giver. Or if they're just getting something, you know, they don't think anything bad of it. There's a lot of people I saw, and I took a really great offense of this because, you know, I don't like it, you know, I, I can't stand a cheater, a woman who cheats, you know, I, I don't like that. I've never cheated on a girl in my life never I don't believe in that don't like that and but likewise imagine some of these men they got wives out there imagine they got a good woman that's doing the right thing holding down doing everything put money on their books taking care of their kids sending them money everything else and they're in there doing this nasty stuff and the woman might be good the whole time that they're in there she might be not be good too but either way what if that guy takes something home that woman think about that that's something that I took great issue with now monster he he ended up getting monster tattooed on his forearm this is a white guy pale pasty nasty white and he's got monster big monster tattooed on his forearm in that management program they have for the weirdos apparently what I heard and this is how the rumor gets around to where you find out what everybody's in there for. In that program, they have them sit in a circle, and they have everybody's paperwork. And they put it down. They have everybody read each other's paperwork to get it out in the open. We're not going to pretend, oh, I just did a little this. No, they said, we're going to tell each one of y'all. We're going to tell what you did. And that's how you're going to work through it and get some mental treatment. They're not going to get fixed. And I want to talk about that there at the end, too, because there is something that some people deem it, it, it legally far-reaching, but it does something to put, keep the chomos put away. Now, why'd they get Monster tattooed on his arm? He was embracing this nickname. And this is absolutely gut-wrenching, heartbreaking. Apparently, the kid that was involved in his case testified in court and said that he looked like a monster, the man that did what he did to him. Apparently, he knew the other people's family. I don't know if he's entrusted in watching the kid. The dad found out. The dad beat him bad. That was a part of, you know, what got spread around, you know, in the paperwork in the case. Apparently, dad beat him real bad. Dad ended up getting in trouble for that. Dad beat him bad. And so the kid said he looked like a monster, so he's getting monster tattooed on his arm, embracing it. You know, you know it's some crazy stuff. So anyway... At the medium security, it's a triangular shaped pod. It's open. There's cells around each side of the triangle. On the corner, two corners of the triangle, top and bottom, they're showers, knee to chest flaps, just trying to give you a mental image. And you've been to Walmart, you've seen those little poles that come out of the ceiling with the ball on it, that's like for security. There's about 50 of those all through the middle of the unit. So people put up bathroom signs. Usually the COs walk past that. Sometimes people do it for privacy, and there's a lot of 
people in there, a lot of deviants. And the big thing I want to get across here is the Germans, you expect this stuff out of them. But there's a lot of these so-called gangsters, so-called tough guys, go hard and talk all this stuff, that are no better than them. You'd have fully clothed women walking around the unit. And you'd see got about five of them rush their cells. They'd put up the bathroom sign, which sometimes a little piece of cardboard goes in the window. It's a window that's about like this. And they you'd see a little a little spot at the bottom that wasn't covered. They'd only have it covered from there up. And you'd see them turn the lights out and you'd see a pair of eyes looking out. And you can guess, they were going to see a fully clothed women. Sometimes it would be big women, sometimes it would be nasty women, sometimes it would be a grandma. And these people are doing that. And some of these guys were taking monster inside of a cell, paying him, then going and kissing their girl on the mouth in the visiting room after they done been doing that. So, best I could figure it, I put two and two together. Bull was running this out, because it sounds like he had to go collect money for somebody he didn't want to pay one time. That's why he told him to get the money ahead of time. And I saw that a number of people, a surprising number of people, and people that would surprise you. If you keep your eyes open, you can see a lot in that open pod. At the low security, people could get away with a lot. You never locked down. It was cubicles. After they count you at nine, you can go back to the TV room. You can stay up all night. You can stay up. You can fix fried rice in the microwave at 3 a.m. You could be working out in the top open TV room at 5 a.m. There was a guy who got up every morning at uh, 5 a.m. Sasha, you snoring, girl. And uh, did jump rope, big shoe. Shoe, man, some people, body weight workouts, didn't really get far. I got fit with that, but some people genetically can do it. Big shoe did. He went from about 170 pounds skinny, man, at, at the biggest arms I've seen on a human. Play, call him shoe because he played tennis shoes. He always played tennis. But he mostly did body weight, but he started lifting, man. That dude got up to about 220, 230. Cool dude. Always had a toothpick in his mouth. He'd be like, yo, my man. And he worked out my buddy Jamie Jones. Got a funny story about it. it. Yeah, people make these friendships in there. You know, it was cool. That's what's cool about the lower securities, too, is less, you know, racial stuff. You still got race people of every, every different type. Every different type. You got piece of crap, racist, white people, black people, Spanish people, uh, Native Americans, Asian. You got every type of person going to be a piece of crap. But you got cool people in there, too. At the low security, it's a lot easier to be friends with who you want to be with. You know what I mean? I hung out with people from my area that I could identify with. Now, I talk country. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be talking, you know, talking like, you know, what up, yo, and all this stuff and be different. And if you grew up talking that way, you're like, that's what it is. But that's not me. So even though I might hang out with the amigos and, you know, they're chopping up talking their way, I'm still talking like I'm talking. I'm just me. I'm me all the time. You could meet me today. Some of y'all will meet me one day. You know, I'll get something cool you're not gonna meet some of you guys you know some of y'all in north carolina some of y'all in virginia get something together maybe throw a party one day start making a little money on here throw a big youtube party for everybody but anyway you'll feel like you've known me your whole life because i don't do that oh hey oh you're from me oh oh okay oh, no i'm like what's up man and i'm just out forth with it but anyhow that nasty stuff was going on and it, it was it was like something else now i'm going to tell you something good that they have and I heard he was up for it because that wasn't the first time he'd been in trouble. They have something for Chomos called civil commitment. Civil commitment means once you're done with your sentence and they have a board say, we don't think you should be around people. You're not safe to be, people aren't safe to be around you. So we're going to give you a whole new trial. You've served your jail time. You're not going to keep on in prison, but you're going to go to a special place. And I heard it's at Butner, which is a medium security in North Carolina. I've heard about it. I don't know the specifics, but basically, they say do the trial, and if they deem that you're unsafe to be around society, you got to go stay at this place, even though you did all your time. There's a guy, Yogi, I had a bald head with a little rat tail coming out the middle back of his head. He was a three-time offender, three different families. He victimized a young boy. He's up for civil commitment, I believe, and I'm hoping he gets it. And I heard, I don't know the facts on this, this is what I overheard people saying, that they have to stay in there, and every five years, they get a chance to go for a review to get out. There was a guy who had been there. They ended back up at Petersburg. And I was standing in line laughing, talking about how much I like civil commitment for those weirdos. And I said, yeah, I heard they do that chemical, you know, castration type stuff. And the one guy goes, they tried to do that stuff to me. He said, I had to do it so I could get, I said, well, we know what you're in here for then, don't we, buddy? And uh, yeah, so they have certain stuff like that that they can get out. But civil commitment, 
it's a whole different trial, a whole different process. I heard they're allowed to have like PlayStations, normal clothes, normal furniture, normal stuff, but they're locked in a building where they can't hurt nobody, and I do endorse that. Anyway, if you liked the video, if you think I earned it, press the like button. If not, 15 minutes and 13 seconds of your life in which you'll never get back. I'm sorry the video is late today. As you can hear from my voice, I have been sick. I'm completely deaf in my right ear. I've had a sinus issue. I have PTSD and I sleep with earplugs. I got water in my ear. I've been sick. I sinus back up. And with the earplugs in there, I'm completely deaf in my right ear right now. I've had to go around and do some, uh, you know, trying to get some help for being ill. Uh, don't got the Rona. Thought I had that, but I don't. But I apologize for this lit video being up late. I put up one a day every day, and I always will, even if it is late. I'm going to try to make up and do two videos tomorrow since this was late. I'm truly sorry. I am very, very good about getting these up. And I'm sorry I've been a little lagging on the comments to try to circle back and answer every single one on the new videos. But I apologize so much from the bottom of my heart for this being late. I haven't done this in a long time, but I just was not able to get back. I, I started to do it in the car, you know, Jay Williams style. Didn't feel right. Y'all wouldn't watch. Sasha's the only reason y'all do keep on watching me. So don't think that I hit 10,000 and I got lazy or something. No, I'm cranking it up to, you know, DEFCON level 5 up in here, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm just not feeling that great, and I'm sorry. But I will get you a video every day. Regardless, if I'm if I'm laying in the bed and I got to have Sasha cuddled up with me and do it, I'm going to do it. I've got y'all back. Y'all been here for me, and I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. We hit 10,000, man. Thank y'all who've been here for a minute, and y'all new people, welcome. Comment on the video. I've been, I'm trying to get back in. The, I've been real ill this week and had some family issues, so I hadn't got to everybody. But I try to comment there, and I have long conversations. If you got a question about fitness, you got a question about addiction, you know, get with me. And Petersburg Low, Justin Berger, I plan on having him here. Hopefully, in the next two weeks, I'll have him on here and do a series of videos with him. He was in my workout group. He can tell you every bit of what I'm saying when I get Pinto on here, which will be in the next month. He will tell you the same. I was pound for pound, strongest white guy, which means bench plus squat plus deadlift divided by body weight. I wasn't the strongest overall, but for my weight, I was the strongest. 565 deadlift with wraps, 535 without, 425 squat and uh 305 bench couldn't ever get 315 but i'm back at it now been back benching for two months i'm back up to uh 205 for 10 and get 225 for seven i'm getting after it and i'm getting back on the deadlift to put those up i got a video of me deadlifting uh 475 for two i was 162 pounds at the time doing jujitsu competitions i got the chain on it and i've got that belt that was made in prison i showed you so and uh that was done at crunch fitness in uh winston salem at paulo santana's jiu-jitsu gym on my old Facebook, which I don't use anymore, if somebody were to go and check that out, go way down on it, there's a girl named Hannah. She went on there and complained about it um, because I didn't I didn't put all the weights back. So she had to unrack 475 pounds I took off after I lifted. I felt really bad about that. But anyway, sorry this is late. I'm doing rough today, guys. But y'all have a good day. And if you like this, press the like button. And leave me a comment if you're a new person. Get to know me. Let me get to know you. Let me get to see you. Because this ain't going to get a whole lot bigger. It got to 10,000 in under six months. It's going to get to 20, 30,000 by the end of a year. And I think we'll be at 100,000 in two years. So get to know me now. As this thing, before this thing gets bigger, get to know me. Let me know who you are. I, li I like to know you guys. You know, and if you got questions about addiction, you're trying to get off something, I got some good advice. I help a lot of addicts put them in the right place. I've referred a lot of people to a few different doctors that I work with. I have some good information, and I will write five essays worth of comments to you on here to try to help you. Some of you know it. I've done it with you. I don't do it. I don't, I don't want nothing from you for it. I've done a lot of bad, and I want to do some good to help people back. And if you see somebody in the comments struggling, talk to them. Bring them up. There's some people in here that I've talked to, you know, that want to do good, and they're trying to do it. They just need somebody to talk them off the ledge when they're getting down. Because, I mean, nobody's hopeless. I was deemed hopeless. Nobody's hopeless. That's bullshit. There's not a person deemed hopeless. I went to rehab three times, 418, mostly to avoid legal prosecution. I was addicted to, uh, to selling dope. That's what I was addicted to. More than more than using, and I thought I was going to be the next George Jung or DMX in Bailey, you know, delusional. And eventually, one day after sitting six months in jail on a year-long sentence, before getting out on bond for two years and having to do the Fed time, I did something clicked. Something can click at any time for any person. You are never beyond repair, and I need you to believe that. And if nobody's told you they love you today. Shoot, man, I love any any addict. 
I love you and I believe in you. So I'm sorry I'm not doing well. Sorry my voice is a little bit raspy, but I told you I was going to get you one, so y'all have a good one. All right now.